Welcome back. This is the fifth video of our course on ethics, recruitment, and sampling. And this video, we're going to talk about sampling approaches. As you've seen in the previous videos, ethical considerations are crucial and participant recruitment is essential for quality research. Consider your research question, which should guide who your participants will be. So for instance, if you're studying the impact of telemedicine on patient care, your participants might be healthcare providers and patients who are directly affected by telemedicine. So let's talk about two most common sampling approaches that you're using in qualitative research. The first is purposive sampling. This is where individuals are chosen for their deep insight or unique perspectives on the research topic. So for example, if you're researching the effects of a new electronic health record system, you might select healthcare professionals who have firsthand experiencing the transition to the new system. The second approach is snowball sampling. And this can be a useful strategy where your participants suggest potential new participants. This strategy can be particularly effective when researching sensitive topics or hard to reach populations such as patients with a rare disease or healthcare professionals in a remote area. Don't worry, that's not all. In the next video, we're going to talk about specific sampling approaches that go under purposive sampling. But the, regardless of the strategy you use, it's paramount to respect participants' rights and dignity. Participation should always be voluntary, and participants should be fully informed about the rights and the purpose of the study. And the final thing I want to talk about in this video is the aims of sampling and qualitative research. Now let's step back for a second. In qualitative research, the aim isn't to generalize findings as it is for quantitative research, but to delve deeply into a specific problem, a phenomenon, or experience. That begs the question, how many participants are enough? And this might lead to the concept of theoretical saturation that many qualitative researchers are familiar with. Theoretical saturation is the point at which gathering more data does not provide any new insights or findings. While the exact point really depends on the topic, the number of participants, the context, and the problem, generally in my experience, 20 to 30 participants for a primary qualitative study is sufficient to reach theoretical saturation. However, it's important to note that in certain types of studies, like phenomenological studies, the number of participants might be as low as 10 due to the depth of the study and understanding the experiences of those 10 people. It's important to keep in mind not just the number of participants, but also how much time and data you have with the participants. But that's all I have for this video. Continue to the next video as we close off our discussion on ethics, recruitment, and sampling. My name is Ramir Madhya. I'm from The Methodologist. If you found this video helpful, please let us know by liking, share, subscribing. Until the next video, take care.